Hello beautiful people, happy weekend, welcome to your practical application of astrology. I am pre-recording this on Friday, however it will be posted on Saturday. So at the time when I'm recording this, uh, moon is still in the sign of cancer. I am a moon in cancer child, uh, so this resonates with my water theme I've got going on here with my oracle decks. Uh, but by the time you're watching this moon is very likely in Leo. And this is all helping us to put into practice what we learned throughout the Leo season with regards to our authentic expression, creativity, and also reconnection with our uh, inner child and our joy and just happiness and just uh, doing things because we enjoy them and all the rest of it. So I've decided that in this video, I'm going to be a little bit... Uh, <laughs> little bit all over the place, little bit creative. Uh, so I'm going to start with my automatic uh, writing and then I'm going to pull one card from the white light oracle which I used for the 888 portal because uh, it wants to speak but the messages are so long. Uh, the interpretations of the message is always spot on but very long. So I'm going to pull one card from there, then I'm going to talk a little bit and then I'm going to, well, a little bit, let's see how it goes. And then I'm going to pull some more cards towards the end and this is what's on the menu. So before we get any further, I would like to open this space and call in on my higher self, my spirit guys, ancestors, uh, my angelic team, all the beings of light that wish to be present for this recording and whoever has uh, something to share is welcome to step forward and thank you for being here and thank you everyone for being here and supporting my work if you do like my content please do like and subscribe uh, so uh, youtube is happy uh, but anyway you know let's just get down to this uh, automatic writing message which i just wrote so i'm gonna do my best to be able to read it after myself <laughs> But sometimes I struggle. So yeah, Virgo season, you know, let's just be honest here. So I asked, what would you like to share with me today, spirit? And this is what I got. Endings and new beginnings. Nothing is ever just ending or beginning. There are different stages happening all at the same time. From the human perspective, things have a beginning and the end. But they don't really. No energy ever just ceases to exist. It changes form, it changes a time and space in which it exists. It moves in between different dimensions and forms of existence. Humanity is undergoing many changes right now, some of them quite unsettling really. However, uh, nothing, is, nothing is truly ending or beginning. The expression of life on planet Earth is just changing form. Life is evolving and you are evolving with it. The movement is constant and the flow continuous. Nothing uh, tr ever truly ends. Uh, it's, it's hard to understand when the ego wants to challenge and compare the experiences to those that are remembered and stored in the memory database. From the human perspective, um, situations end, people die, things get destroyed and cease to exist. However, this is only one way uh, of perceiving reality, uh, only one dimension to consider. There are many others, many realities coexisting simultaneously. Many choices could be made at the same time and the consequences and outcomes of those uh, look very differently on differ different levels of consciousness. The consciousness on planet Earth is rapidly expanding. You might feel that it's just the past regurgitating itself and it's not going anywhere. Nothing is changing, nothing is getting better. Well, the past has to come out of the infected wound for the wound to be able to heal. You are at different stages of this process. Uh, progress is underway, it is happening. More and more of you are awakening, asking questions, starting to think for yourselves and trust your intuition. There is a lot of healing and transmutation of the old stuck energy taking place at this time. Each time the old energy gets released because it's been healed and is no longer stuck, more light penetrates the spaces that were occupied by the shadows before. It is all happening, dear ones. Everything is supporting you in this forward momentum towards a very different reality that any uh, reality from any you had been experiencing until this moment in time. 
The entire universe is supporting you and is evolving and expanding with you. You are not alone. You have never been and never will be alone. You are part of everything that ever was, is and will be. You are infinite. You have no beginning and no end. Everything in between is just an illusion, a game and experience. Enjoy every step of your journey, no matter how hard or how easy Nothing lasts forever. Everything is changing and will continue to change. Just flow with the current of your life and follow the guidance of your soul. It's always guiding you to the perfect ne next place uh, on your journey. Always. Okay, so this is the message. And now let's see what the white light oracle from Alana Fairchild uh, wants to say. I was even contemplating not writing any channeled message and, <laughs> and just re read Anna Fairchild's channeled message because, yeah, she definitely can bring some good stuff uh, through the channels down here. So let's see, White Light Oracle, what would you like to share with us at this moment? Because you wanted to speak, so I'm sure you have a message for us. Okay, White Light Oracle message. Cupio dissolvi, number two. There's a person lying down in contemplation, a lot of light coming out of her chest. Yeah, this, this deck is very uh, monochronic with regards to color. Um, and a lot of the cards have like hertz, you know, like a frequency, but this one doesn't. So let's see what this one wants to say. Uh, let's just see what's at the bottom. Spirit beer, 396 hertz. So here we go. Oh, and more cars are now flying out. Now they all want to speak. But anyway, with Alana Fairchild and the time restriction, uh, we can only read one <laughs> because <laughs> it would take whole day to read all these cards. So anyway, let's see this Cupio di Solvi. Let's see what it wants to say. So this is the number two. The card of the duality and partnership. So is this lady. Yeah. It is time to let go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Think, things are working out in their own way. Trust that your heart is wise and leading you on a soul healing journey and the right spiritual path. Spirit wants to bring you a blessing and a resolution, but you must let go and allow it to happen. Events are, fond, uh, events are unfolding according to a higher plan. Even if your plans are going awry, know that all will come together at the right time and in the best way possible. Surrender your struggle and hold on to your faith. Do you do not need to be in control in order to be safe and help things work out in the best possible way. In an often spiritual deficient modern culture, we have developed a kind of mystical amnesia. We have forgotten the genuine, effective and astonishing power of spiritual intervention that can be evoked by an open heart. This oracle brings you a message from spirit. There is a problem in your life that seems very real and substantial. Yet, if you approach it from a more mystical perspective, desiring spiritual connection and healing, the issue, that issue can dissolve. It can be absorbed into spiritual light and be healed. It can transform in such a way that your current viewpoint of suffering will cease to exist. There is a path of healing you have yet to recognize. As you let go of what you think should or must be done, you will recognize a, a perhaps unexpected path to your true healing and inner fulfillment opening up before you. The Latin phrase cupio dissolvi refers to a desire to dissolve, 
to be absorbed into the luminosity of the soul, where there is beauty, relief, and peace. To enter into such a state requires a loosening of our attachments and fixations upon our problems in the physical world. This does not mean we deny our troubles. In letting go, we give spirit permission to heal the state of heart and mind that has led us into these difficulties. It can be surprising just how much we hold on to things we wish to be freed from. From. It might help you let go if you reflect on what would be different for you if this problem is no longer in your life. Sometimes we might, we might hold on to pain hoping to gain acknowledgement from a certain person who might just lack the emotional capacity and spiritual development to grant us a heartfelt apology. Sometimes we punish ourselves by holding on to pain, holding impossible and unhelpful standards in, of inhuman perfection when we could forgive ourselves and move on. Spiritually, we have the power to forgive and free ourselves and others. There is so much to be gained in doing so. It is a way to heal the heart from emotional poison, awaken inner peace and freedom and move forward with our lives. As we forgive and enter the temple of the heart, we can see beautiful visions of what is now possible. Feelings of euphoria may awaken. We realize we have set ourselves free from the past. A constraint that once weighed heavily upon our hearts has been cast off by our spiritual will. Knowing we have such a beautiful power within can bring gratitude and wonder into our hearts. In the spiritual landscape of the heart, we let go of what we think and engage with what we, what we feel. The true mystical experience of divine love is not just emotional, emotional, it is transfiguring. It helps us transform ourselves and our lives. This oracle guides you to immerse yourself in the spiritual light within your heart. A beautiful and uplifting outcome is being offered to you. Trust in spirit, let go and receive. And then the healing process. Consider any problem you have been wrestling with or a painful situation or interpretation of events to which you are attached. If you are willing to do so, you can now set an intention to offer that attachment to spirit through this healing process. Place a hand on your heart, consciously connect to the flow of your breath, close your eyes and rest for several moments. Imagine, feel or intend that you are now aware of your heart, experiencing it from the inside as though you were sitting in the middle of your heart chakra. From deep within the center of your heart, a pure white spiritual light begins to radiate outward. It feels joyful, uplifting, peaceful, expansive. Now we practice bha bhavana, a Sanskrit word that means infusion. Allow the white light to gently infuse into your being like a sacred tea, subtly perfuming and rich enriching your soul. The white light is being absorbed into your cells, into your mind, into your heart. You feel more settled, peaceful and blissful as this process unfolds. Intend to release your offering into the light, now letting it go from your heart. In the light it can dissolve and transform. This process can be gentle and powerful. Sense that you, your offering and the light are one. Complete this practice with manola, manolaya, a Sanskrit word for meaning, Im, uh, meaning immersion and complete absorption. Gracefully, choose to let every, everything else go and settle into being one with the light. Take your time and gently emerge from your luminous contemplation when you are ready. Ground yourself and you have completed the practice. So, yeah. Letting go, you know, the endings and be beginnings, which are just process of transformation through which we are letting go. And here is seven blessings of Eve. But let me just read the beginning of this spirit bear, which is number 15, which is number six, the harmony and balance, because Venus is now in Libra and will have a conjunction with South Node next week. And this is three, nine, six. So I'm just going to read the beginning of the interpretation rather than the whole things which takes 10 minutes. So, the spirit bear of 396 hertz, 
you are being healed from guilt and fear such emotional will no longer steal your personal power or de desuade you from confidence happiness and realizing your own worth no matter how unlikely it may seem you are going to emerge from a spiritual winter into light and life the div divinely ordained time for your liberation healing and emergence is much closer than you realize abundant blessings are stirring and shall soon manifest and it just says the frequency of 396 is deeply nurturing and protective it is the heart frequency of universal mother protecting her young okay i'm gonna leave it at that because like i said that would be another 10 minutes to read that card but this is technically what's going on you know we are letting go of that which no longer serves because we are st stepping into our freedom we are being nurtured into this freedom, into this new direction. And even though I am going to release my astrological forecast next week on Tuesday, I recorded it yesterday and there are a lot of messages that are um, explaining what we are going through right now and why. So that's why, you know, I started using the cards because I really enjoy this confirmation from the other side and also having the depiction so it's something people can actually look at you know so something our brain can chew on but yeah just from my personal experience you know to share um like i am culminating also because i only have one week left in the uk um and then i'm going to uh, to the states for a visit for one month and then i'll be returning back to europe for two weeks and then i'll be going to mexico again for winter which is something that i did not expect and of course anything can happen at any point we know that we're living in a <laughs> in a ever quickly changing times uh, and nothing is really set in a stone and to be taken for granted but just from this experience, which I, I do intend to uh, record one more practical application astrology uh, next weekend, um, but that probably will be done outdoors because uh, my current living uh, circumstances are going to change again in a couple of days. There will be people moving into this apartment. So, um, so yeah, so I don't know how the whole setup will work <laughs> with regards to my, my work. Uh, so it's a lot of... Um, like it's it, like it's like being in between different world worlds, you know. Like we going through this, and again, I don't know obviously how this is showing up for other people, but there is this process of like, well, Virgo season, learning and adjusting, and this process of transformation that is happening through releasing, you know, discerning, applying into practice what we learn, letting go of what we learn doesn't work. So I was very blessed to have this past week and a half of solitude. I've been alone in this apartment where I'm staying currently and it's been uh, it's been the opportunity for me to settle into my energy and uh, have more time to introspect and to focus on my meditation and stuff so a lot of things have been coming up for me also I had some personal uh, healing session uh, for myself um, because you know we all <laughs> we all have to do some TLC, take care of ourselves as well. Like even though I do uh, offer readings and support people on their path, I, I'm also on my own path, and I also need support from time to time. So uh, it's somehow you know uh, Virgo season seems as a good time to do it. I suppose this just all happened uh, naturally that way. It wasn't really planned. Uh, it just you know it just happened at the right time. And yeah, there is definitely a lot that is uh, shifting under the whales. I feel especially now with, well, at the time of me recording this, uh, Uranus is still direct and Pluto is still in Aquarius just about, but this is going to change on Sunday. Sunday night, uh, Monday morning, Uranus is going to station retrograde and then subsequently Pluto will re-enter Capricorn for the final time under the influence of Uranus retrograde, Saturn is retrograde, Neptune is retrograde, Pluto is retrograde, Chiron is retrograde, Mercury is now direct, thanks God, <laughs> but it's still in shadow until I believe, what was it, like uh, September 12th or something. Um, so either way, we had this uh, Mercury retrograde uh, situation in Leo uh, that started in Virgo that has been helping us to tap into our heart, into our authenticity, what is authentic for us, what doesn't, doesn't work for us, not judge something that is different from that, but to be able to accept, you know, accept the situation 
for what it is, but also accept that, you know, I am that I am and this is, you know, this is what I need. This is important to me or, you know, whatever, wherever, whichever stage we at. So I feel that in this Virgo season, and I don't know, I just feel this is like very nebulous energy, you know, even though it is a Virgo season, which is like earth sign, you know, so it should be like easy to grasp onto. Uh, but I still, I feel a lot of nebulous energy, like there is so much nebulous energy. And I think it's because of all these retrograde, which are taking us inwards for reconstructing uh, like of our inner landscape. And that's why I was being guided to record this video today while Moon is still in the sign of Cancer and me being Moon in Cancer. And actually, Moon in Cancer is trying in my Saturn and it's going to try my Wheel of Fortune before it uh, moves into, into Leo. Uh, so there is a lot of uh, energy and actually sextile in my Mars too, because my Mars is on 29 degrees of Taurus. So... I feel a lot of this nebulous energy at the moment uh, that is like, yeah, there are a lot of adjustments happening, but I feel a lot of these adjustments are not necessarily happening outside of us, you know, it's uh, like, yeah, you know, in my case, you know, as I mentioned, uh, there will be changes within my, you know, living situation for the upcoming week until I leave the UK. I also have to change from one room to another. Uh, to accommodate the new tenants who are coming for a long-term stay and I'm just here for another week. So anyway, so there are a lot of moving parts, obviously more packing again and, uh, you know, stress about uh, <laughs> extra weight and stuff like the usual, the usual stuff. Uh, but all the same, even though there are these situations that are happening outside, you know, that we still need to interact with because, you know, everyday life, mundane reality, you know, Virgo, chop wood, carry water... That are at the same time as we just keep going with motions and uh, just just going through life and doing what needs to be done, you know. Uh, there is so much happening. Um, I feel also in our dream dream time. I've been having a lot of crazy dreams since I've been here in the UK. Um, some of them remem I remember, some of them I don't, but it's been, it's been like really like a proper astro travel and stuff. Uh, so there is so much happening that we don't even uh, know because we cannot grasp everything with this human brain, which is uh, wired to be focusing just on this 3D reality where actually our mind is expanding and we are tuning into things that we can know yet identify or put a finger on like you know this is this is all already happening we just don't necessarily have the words or you know we are not um, conscious of it on a on a you know human level <laughs> like this is all happening on a spiritual level so anyway again I don't know if this makes sense but this is what I've been experiencing and what I've been perceiving that the days are just flying you know it's just like wake up you know do your thing eat uh, go to sleep you know it's like the days are literally just flying you know like uh you know in movies that they used to show these calendars where you like tearing the pages or flipping the pages if you have the day calendar you know with like a daily pages and stuff and uh you know and it's just like if you put it on a fast motion then it's like doo, 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 you know you're just flipping the pages very quickly and stuff and that's what i feel is happening that there is this everyday life which you are still like participating in, you know, we still participating in, we are showing up, you know, we're doing the mundane things, you know, washing dishes, doing the laundry, you know, going uh, food shopping and having your meals and whatever, using bathroom. But at the same time, so the physical body is going through all these things, you know, these motions of the human experience. But I feel there is so much happening while you know, the, the, the physical body and the physical brain is occupied with this, with this everyday life, you know, of Virgo existence. There is so much happening on our inner landscape, you know, with all these um, upgrades, solar flares, all these portals we've going through and, you know, all these things, all these things that are happening that we cannot necessarily see with human eyes, but they are here, they are present and they are, they are happening, they are happening. And this is, this is what I've been feeling that even though the, the world, you know, with my eyes, when I look at the reality uh, around me, it, it looks the same or it looks like um, not much is changing or not very quickly, 
but it just feels like I don't know. It's just, I, I I don't know how to explain it in a ver world words. It literally feels like the spirit is so busy, you know, doing stuff, but the the human avatar is kind of just like going through the motion, you know, because we just have to kind of get through this period of time, you know, of this transformation, and the, eventually, you know, like the the two will like um, synchronize synchronize because i feel i don't know i just feel that there is some misalignment i don't know if misalignment is the right word you know like um it's it's not quite um fine-tuned and it's not quite connected what's going on in the outer reality and the inner reality in the spirit world you know the two are kind of at the moment like they are happening alongside each other but they are happening at different speed and different things are happening and at the moment they are not yet like kind of ready to merge because i also feel that on a physical level you know we are interacting with these things that are reminding us what needs healing and then you know in the dream time or through our, our through our practices and stuff we're going through this process of healing Healing these energies and stuff so there is this kind of space in between i feel there is this space in between there is the physical human reality and then there is the reality through which our souls operates and it's preparing for the merge emergence you know the merging of the the spirit you know of our higher self with the human body but at the moment the two are not quite ready so it's like the two are like getting like polished you know or something like they're getting like formed uh you know kind of like separate Separately, but not really, but like separately for the, you know, for the uh, simplicity of human understanding, you know, that they are being like prepared, you know, so they can just fit into each other perfectly, you know, but we are not there quite yet. Uh, so this is what I feel is happening. And I don't have the words to, to fully explain what I'm, what I'm feeling, what I'm tapping into here. But I know for sure that in my personal experience, this is, you know, what I've been uh, kind of undergoing undergoing that there is all this stuff going through motions everyday reality you know i am very grateful that i had this past 10 days of solitude and quiet which is so important to me but you know it's not always perfect the reality is not always perfect so yeah so that is going to change but again that is just uh provoking uh my flexibility or provoking my rigidity and inability to be flexible sometimes but um uh, it is this learning to to bend with the with the flow of life when the roots are steady you know when the roots are firm we can just bend you know the branches can just bend you know with the with the wind and they will not break so this is what i feel that is happening also you know we are creating this stronger foundation through uh releasing all this stuff that you know that is not no longer supporting us and uh tapping more into our true selves you know like uh, reconnecting more with uh, the authentic expression of our soul rather than just you know like um living out the program that we've been installed and this projection of uh, other people and external environment onto us or who we should be and what we should do and how we should lead our, live our life i feel more and more people are becoming aware of themselves and uh bringing more of their true essence authentic essence into their everyday life like making these adjustments step by step you know making these small changes that uh, that eventually will uh, create a completely different life completely different experience uh, and, you know, at the same time, there are all these other things happening, you know, in the world, you know, like not just in our personal reality, but in the world that are also like uh, bringing the unhealed, unresolved stuff, you know, all this stuff from the shadows is coming out for us to look at and um, transmute, have the opportunity to heal. Uh, but it all starts from us. It all starts from us. So this is why I feel, especially now in the Virgo season, because it is the season of healing, Virgo and Pisces, the season of healing. And it is the mutable sign is the season before of the change of season. And as I already mentioned in previous videos, you know, still within the Virgo season, we'll have the first eclipse, which is the one in Pisces, conjunction with Neptune. And then we have the equinox. And then the brand new season will start, which will be the final trimester 
of this year and this year just disappeared it's gone so quickly uh so yeah so soon we'll be tapping into the year number nine which is the next year and that is about endings culminations endings even though you know we know that nothing is really ending it just changes in form right but you know from our human perspective and uh, the way we experience in this reality at the moment things are culminating so this is uh now preparing us for this final three months of this year October, November, this, yeah, because I'm just counting in my head, am I, am I, am I saying the right, you know, the ego is just like, am I, am I saying the right thing, you know, Virgo, am I doing it, am I saying it right, <laughs> uh, yeah, the last trimester of the year, and that will be, um, that will be the end of 2024 after that, and it's gonna be here before we know it, because the time is just, it's just like going at triple speed now, not double speed, triple speed, it's just ridiculous, just how, um, uh, I really like have to remind myself sometimes like, okay, uh, how do I want to spend this time that is so fast now? It's going so quickly. Like, how do I want to use this time? Because the time is speeding up, is going at much faster rate. So we can do much less because the time is accelerating. So we don't have as much time as we thought we had because the time is going faster so how do I want to use this time? You know, and sometimes I really have to be discerning because, for example, you know, by the time I finish with di dinner, it's much later than it used to be. So I'm thinking like, okay, maybe I have another hour, hour and a half before I go to sleep. How do I want to use that time? Because I cannot do all these things. I can only choose maybe one thing to focus on and stuff. So I think this is also training us to be more mindful like discern discerning and mindful with regards to how are we using this time how are we living in this life because if the time is speeding up and anything can happen at any point because nothing is guaranteed and we know we undergoing massive changes and transformations and certain things will end you know with regards to human experience how are we using the time that we have available now? Because the present moment is the only thing that we have, right? So I feel all this Virgo season is kind of like, <laughs> and this is funny, this was, <laughs> spirit just got, it's, 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 uh, it's helping us to remember our humanity. <laughs> It's helping us to remember that, okay, you know, you are here in the physical incarnation and it is uh, it does have an expiry date you know this body has an expiry date so i feel in this virgo season and because of everything else that's going on you know we, we are heading for this new moon in virgo but because i just recorded the video for the two weeks later i'm like pfft. like for me time is like literally it just doesn't even <laughs> it just doesn't even make sense you know uh but anyway so i feel like really we are more and more realizing this our humanness uh, like, yeah, you know, I have this life, you know, what am I doing with it? How am I spending my time? Uh, what is a part of my everyday reality that I don't really enjoy? And, you know, there are things we can change, things we cannot change. But out of these things that we can change, uh, how are we going to change them, you know? And what, what steps are we taking towards making these adjustments that will then eventually become a big change in our lives. So that's what I feel this Virgo is about, but uh, predominantly because of uh, the Virgo full moon being the eclipse, you know, in March 2025. And this is the one I'm very, very sensitive about because that's my Pluto square Pluto, the first one. Um, but this new moon in Virgo, it is not just about this mundane every day and these adjustments we're making and having the opportunity to create some changes because it's uh, the you know new season is behind the horizon. But this is much more than that because you know Pluto is back in Capricorn in two days, like you know after Sunday night. So Uranus is going to go direct as at the moment current rule of to Pluto and upcoming rule of Pluto and Uranus will be still. Did I say direct? Uh, Uranus is going to go retrograde. Uranus is going to go retrograde and Uranus is going to be retrograde for the entire time that Pluto will be in Capricorn. And almost for the entire time Pluto will be in Capricorn, Saturn will also be retrograde. So we have all this energy that is bringing around everything that is unresolved from the past for us to transmute and transform at the rapid play, uh, a rapid speed because the Aquarian age is already here. Pluto already has been in, uh, in, in Aquarius twice. 
And this is what I was saying yesterday when I was recording my <laughs> astrological forecast, what spirit was giving me that we are being spoon fed, you know, like a baby. We are being spoon fed like a formula and then the mushy food to prepare for this Aquarian age fully, you know, when Pluto is fully there. And then eventually when in 2026, we have the new, you know, uh, the big planet, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, uh, all changing signs, you know, for the next uh, few, few years, uh, depending which one, of course, for Neptune is 12 years uh, for Saturn is two and uh, you know almost three years so it's, it differs of course but th this is it you know this is not just any Virgo season of the you know let's just make some improvement and just carry on as we've always been no this is a very different Virgo season because this is the last Virgo season in our life with Pluto in Capricorn like ever <laughs> so uh, well I mean ever until your next incarnation but in this incarnation doubtful that any of us will have this experience again who knows though you know the technology is always improving uh, so that's what I mean that there is a lot of there are a lot of things coming up uh, into our consciousness that needs a resolution because we cannot take them with them because we cannot take them with them into this next cycle into this uh, new era of human evolution and that's why everything is everything is manifesting and like grabbing for our attention because it needs to be released. It needs to be re resolved and released and it needs to re release its hold on us because this is also like what I've been tapping into and sharing with my friends and some of my clients that I feel that, you know, us as humans, and this is again just something that I believe, I'm not saying this is the truth and, you know, people are welcome to challenge me on this, uh, that many of us are born into certain families and again, you know, Virgo season, family constellations and all the rest of it. A lot of people are doing a lot of healings and a lot of the healings starts from the family. A lot of people are born, including myself, I have no doubt, are born into families where, you know, this is not necessarily our starseed family. This is just our human family, you know, human family that we have a contract with, you know, different starseed we have a contract with. And then we incarnate as human and we born into these families to, you know, to help to evolve a certain dynamic or bloodline or whatever. Uh, and uh, now we are at the times with the Saturn in um, Pisces where we are... Uh, getting to the point of releasing all this karma, all these hooks and attachments and contracts and bonds and everything, so we can actually come together with our real soul family, with our real starseed family, so we now go ahead into the Aquarian age, you know, to co-create this different reality, but all this, like, you know, being reborn into the same family, you know, with the same uh, dynamics, and, you know, like I said previously, you play this role, I play that role, okay, we're gonna maybe not resolve it, then we switch, you know, I play that role, you played, so, for example, you know, uh, let's say a woman who is abused, you know, her husband is beating her up, or something, and she never leaves, you know, she's abused until until she dies or he kills her or something and then in next life they reverse okay the wife that was abused now will be abusing the husband who he will be the wife or something or whatever you know like whatever dynamics yeah but it's just this continuous like copy paste you know we just change the role but it's the same energy that needs to be transformed and you know we have certain contracts with all these you know other uh, beings that we decide okay we we you know we ho we hook up and uh, you know keep coming back into this family this bloodline until we resolve it you know until we transmute this energy that exists within the human collective consciousness and is no longer in alignment with where we're going yeah so this is why i feel that a lot of us feel this desire conscious or subconscious to heal to heal like our ancestor wounding to heal our relationships you know to heal whatever needs healing in our lives because we we know on a soul level we know that the time is coming where we, we we will have different um not uh, goals but uh, we'll be focused on different things not this continuous resolving the karma through incarnation and playing opposite roles and just you know the same pattern but played differently in different uh, time and age blah 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 no like all of this is being packed up you know all of this is finishing it's all of it is culminating so this is why i feel that uh, we cannot escape it anymore and this is for everyone you know all of us like you know like things are either becoming so unbearable that uh, 
you know, people, people either resolve them, you know, like, you know, there's no escaping, like we need to focus on this and resolve this, or people just checking out and eventually they will, they will check out, you know, like they say, like, okay, no, this is the role I came here to play. I, you know, I'm not here to resolve anything, you know, I just came here to be the contrast or to be the shadow player or to be the opponent or to be anything, you know, because everybody has a role to play, you know, everybody's needed. And that's a different story, you know. But uh, yeah, so there is no right and wrong. I just really feel uh, that, you know, for a lot of us, this is what's happening. And especially now in this Virgo season, because Virgo is the human journey, the hero's journey is the archetype that uh, precedes um, Libra, which is, you know, the socialization, you know, going from the lower hemisphere of the chart into upper hemisphere from Virgo archetype, sixth house into seventh house, Libra archetype. And Libra is about the balancing, right? The neutralization of the energy. So, and the next moon after the new moon is a full moon in uh, full moon in Pisces, which is the eclipse, yeah? Conjuncting Neptune. Neptune is still retrograde at the time. Saturn is still retrograde, you know? Everybody is retrograde apart from Jupiter. Jupiter is not yet retrograde. Jupiter will turn retrograde in October. And uh, Venus, uh, Mars will turn retrograde in December and Venus next year, I think, February. So, you know, so these are not yet retrograde, but all the big players are retrograde. You know, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, um, Saturn and Chiron, because Chiron is the key between Saturn and Uranus. They all retrograde and that's all bringing this stuff from the past for us to take inwards again and to resolve in a different way so the landscape of the reality we are experiencing can change and it has to change inside for it to change outside because as above so below as within so without the reality is created from inside out this uh, outside of us this is just a projection you know like uh, people who you know are uh, much further along on this path they keep saying that this, what we are experiencing as our life, as human, this is the dream state. This is the illusion. This is the dream. You know, the, the, when we are in a spirit form and we are fully conscious, you know, the, we are fully <laughs> spirit, that is the real. That, that is the real state, uh, right? So this is what I mean. You know, this is literally the energy I'm tapping into. It's like very nebulous, very like a Neptune, you know, very foggy, you know, it's just like, and I think it's also because Neptune is uh, sextile in my Mars <laughs> and trying in my Saturn. But this is what, what I'm tapping into, that there is this, this energy, which is like a perfume, it's very elusive. And uh, yeah, and we just like, we don't even know, even know exactly like, what are we playing with and what are we working with? We just kind of like being guided from our internal, you know, compass. And we need to follow it because this external reality is just going to show us the outcome of what's going on inside of us. It's like the projection is the mirror and it's also the, the, the trigger and the contrast. So we can see, so we can observe the, the observer, the higher self can observe what's going on here. But, you know, I, I don't know, I seriously, I'm really struggling with words today and it's not even Mercury retro, retrograde anymore, so I cannot blame it. But to me, you know, like it makes sense energetically, you know, the energy of this makes sense, you know, how everything is just uh, like take, being taken out of place so it can be fixed and then put back into place. And then it will look very different, you know, it's like, you know, what, what I was tapping into that, you know, it's like the higher self and the human self. And, you know, like at the moment, there is some kind of like a shaping going on, some kind of process so the two can fit in again, you know, they can fit in. So it's like, like that, you know, the reality of the out, outer and inner world, the inner world is being, um, it's under reconstruction. So then the outer world will also look differently because at the moment we know that, you know, both are kind of like uh, needing some repair, that there is a need for repair, there is a need for adjustment and that's what's going on. And then when everything is being put into place, it will look very different. You know, like when you have renovation on your house, you know, there is a lot of mess. It's a lot of, you know, uh, a, a lot of, it takes some time and space, right? And then when everything is put back into place and you have this brand new house, you know, beautiful house, then it looks very different and it offers a very different experience, right? So that's, I feel literally, this is probably the best uh, analogy. This is where we at, you know, it's like, imagine that your house is undergoing this demolition, repair, you know, it's not completely being taken out, you know, it's not like uh, being 
made into ashes uh, but it's you know there is there are some good bones good bones the house for example has a good bones right but there is a lot that needs to be reconstructed that's what's going on right now in our inner world and uh, the outer world right because the reality we've been experiencing until this point we all know it's maxed out it's ending well even though it's not ending it's just changing uh, form but the, our perception of how life was before is ending. This is not going to be the same uh, anymore. And also us as a humans and the way we've been operating and experiencing reality is ending too. Because it all needs to be upgraded. It's, it's all going through this reconstruction. And when things are then unveiled, you know, like grand new opening, it's going to look very different. And it's going to be exactly where, you know, where we want to be evolutionary wise. So anyway, so this is what I'm tapping into here. But I think I'm just going again in, two, in circles and tapping myself deeper into this nebulousness and making no sense. So I'm going to pull some cards. So let's see. Uh, so where should we start? Let's start with the Mother Earth. Let's start with the Mother Earth, the Sacred Earth Oracle. Let's see what the Mother Earth wants to tell us about this process. This actually is probably, let's just ground. Yeah, let's let's ground yourself. So let's start with Mother Earth. Mother Earth will tell you what's what. Okay, this is not the right deck. Okay, I got the right deck. Sacred, Sacred Earth Oracle. Okay, Mother Gaia, Mother Earth. Please give us some guidance with regards to this process we are experiencing at the moment. Thank you. Mother Gaia. What's happening? Okay. Productivity. <laughs> Didn't we have this card before? I'm sure I've seen this card before. Productivity. I also feel it's like the reparenting of the inner child. Reparenting of the inner child also being taught you know also there is like a mandela you know like the you know like the process of how things are you know in reality the the stages of growth different stages of growth you know all this nature you can see that they technically look like they're growing from the nature you know they're connected to the no nature so yeah i really feel that it's the process of uh, we're going through the process of reparenting ourselves creating a different structure and reconnecting with the nature and we are somewhere in that process now. And what we have at the bottom? Connection. <laughs> Reconnecting, yes. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and this is perfectly going to take us to the next card. Uh, next card, next deck I'm going to use. Because look, all this ocean. It, she looks like she's at the bottom of the ocean. So yeah, earth and water. That's exactly the decks I have ready. <laughs> earth and water. So okay, let's, let's go to this productivity and see what... Um, Tony Salerno uh, had in mind when he created this card. This is productivity. Earthly meaning, the energy and experiences you have been handed can be converted to meaningful life-affirming outcomes. It's like the house with the good bones, you know. We don't need to take it all down. It just needs to be re renovated. <laughs> with a little work and perspective, an obstacle will, be uh, obstacle will become a stepping stone. Do what you can, when you can, and make steady progress. Effort is required to, to transform an idea, experience, or knowing into something more solid. Once it has formed, new growth will follow. The spiritual meaning, the Divine Mother dwells, dwells in every heart. Her light is inside and all around you, for she is all that is beautiful uh, throughout our world. She lives in every mountain, meadow, tree and blade of grass. Her light illuminates the stars, the, her wisdom guides the moons, her brilliance flow, flows from the sun. She is a wildflower whose perfume teases our senses to curiosity, action, and the pursuit of joyous life. Uh, okay, and then it's there is here at the bottom it says also, It is time to convert the lessons and experiences you have absorbed into life-giving creativity, Turn them into activity, into growth and into form. There is joy in productivity. Its nectar is sweetly intoxicated, intoxicating and its fruit is a mark of transformation and completeness. 
So yeah, so that's what I mean. There is a lot happening. There is a lot going on, even though we might think like, oh, well, everything we see is this destruction and world falling apart and our life is falling apart. But there is so much happening. There is so much happening in the invisible worlds. You know, our soul is working on so many things and the body just needs to go through motion to just get through this. <laughs> get through this, you know, but there is a lot happening, you know, and every time something pops up, we just, you know, deal with it and then we get one step closer to where we're going. Okay. Connection. Let's see what the connection has to say. Connection. Meaning, find yourself by, by losing yourself in a conversation, a story, or someone's eyes. Be vulnerable, be emotional, and be moved to deeper understanding. Empathy is required. Let the pain, suffering, love, and joy of others find a home in your heart. Accepting another without reservations means accepting yourself as well. Spiritual meaning, focus on a subtle divine force inside you. Recognize this force in all things, for it is all things and it it is everywhere. Separation from the energy, beauty, grace and power of the Divine Mother is an illusion. Feel her fertility and everlasting peace inside you. Through her love, life unfolds with endless blessings. Through you, her love flows upon, upon the world, flows out upon the world. So it just says about how mother is in everything, you know, the mother nature in, in ocean, you know, in um, roots, in waterfalls, everything. And then it says, its boundaries are no more, and yet nothing is lost. You you too are on a journey home. Every cell of you being know, of your being knows the way, and your destination is guaranteed. Love without wi without boundaries. You cannot lose yourself by remembering your divine connection with all living things. So yeah. So just by reading this card, what I really feel, you know, is that literally we are reconstructing our reality from inside out, inside and out, you know, like everything is happening simultaneously. The bones of humanity, the core of humanity, our heart, our empathy, compassion and our ability, you know, to grow and evolve uh, through connection to one another, you know, that's good. That's the thing that will be kept, you know, like our essence of humanity, you know, the heart, the compassion like that's that's what i mean most people are good in essence they're good they're good in their heart yeah so this is what we keep in you know we keep in this the humanity doesn't have to be completely scrapped of the surface of earth because there is some goodness which we want to create uh, uh, keep we want to preserve but then there are aspects of humanity that we need to um transmute we need to transmute, release, we need to let go of like these lower vibrational dense energies which are no longer in alignment with where Mother Earth is going. Mother Earth is already five dimensional, you know, Mother Earth is ascending as well, you know, is ascending and evolving. And we are no longer a frequency match to Mother Earth where she is going if we don't change. We need to allow these dense energies that were part of our human experience, the lower, you know, lower density like anger, you know, frustration, hate, shame, guilt, despair, you know, all this jealousy and stuff like this, this lower vibrational frequency, they have to be transmuted, you know, and they have to become something something other they have to become the polarity of that you know hate love you know like um you know jealousy acceptance forgiveness willingness you know these kind of things you know that's that's what's happening and then here at the bottom you know this card about the connection because we are all part of the same you know we are all part of the one yeah and uh we understanding that by uh, like <laughs> You know, like she said, that everything is part of the mother, you know, all the aspects of the nature. And we are like emerger, emerging, you know, as in this human incarnation through this body, we are like our true essence is re-emerging so we can connect again. But it doesn't mean we're going to lose ourselves like we 
<laughs> we're losing the ego, but it doesn't mean we're going to lose our unique expression. And this is why we need to reconnect with our heart, our authenticity. What is your purpose? What did you come here to do? You know, not two people are exactly the same because not two souls are the same. They said that the soul, soul signature is even rarer than the fingerprint. You know, it's very rare. So each and every single one of us has a special purpose, but we all come from the same place and return to the same place. But our expression is different, right? So this is the thing, you know, we are reemerging, the soul is reemerging, we losing ourselves to, to find ourselves, you know, we losing the ego, so we find the true essence of who we are, so we can reconnect to one another in this deeper way by um, keeping our authentic expression, because we've lost it. We've lost it. We try to become, a, we, 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 want, we want to be separate because we don't think we are, you know, a part of the one, right? Uh, but our authenticity was lost because we try to, we, we are separate, but we try to belong where necessary. We don't need to belong or, you know, fulfill all these expectations and conditionings and stories and stuff. So in a sense, we lost ourselves to all of these outer uh, projected realities but uh, we feel separate, we feel alone. So where we're heading is the opposite. We feel united and together and connected, but our uniqueness, our authentic expression will be radiating through. So this is what I feel. You know, this is what I feel is the message. I hope that it conveyed in a better way that, you know, it's understandable. Okay, and now because there was this ocean, Let's move to the Whispers of the Ocean. Whispers of the Ocean Oracle, which I had never used before on the camera. I had this deck for about a year and I had never used it. So let's see uh, what messages want to come out of here. Okay, Whispers of the Ocean. What the, what the water, the water, the emotions, the water, the intuition, the spirit. Yeah, because you have the earth, the Gaia, you know, we connect it to Gaia by our, our human body. Our human body is made of the same elements as the earth and as the cosmos, you know, so this is what connects us to Gaia. But at the same time, it's the emotions, you know, our emotions, our intuitions, which connects us to spirit, because we both, we, we are everything, right? So let's see what the water wants to say. Okay, whispers of the ocean. What is the message, please? Okay. Enjoy the journey. <laughs> that, that was in a channeled message somewhere. Where is it? Yeah, enjoy every step of your journey. Exactly. That's exactly what was in that message. And here we go again. Enjoy the journey number 21, which is... Number 21 is the world card, right? And... <laughs> Spoiler, spoiler alert that came up for the astrological forecast for next week. So enjoy the journey, stay present and flexible. Many changes are going on for you and around you. These changes are not only good, but necessary. Bring your awareness into the now rather than focusing on the past or the future. Wow, look at that. This beautiful underwater world is all there. It's all happening. You see, it's all happening. That's what I mean. Enjoy the journey, you know, the, the tomorrow is not guaranteed, it's literally just now, so let's enjoy it. So the full message is you can embrace the prospect of starting out on a new journey or project, even though you don't quite feel ready or prepared. You do not necessarily have a solid plan in place, nor do you really know where you are headed. Remaining excited about the potential will benefit you. Upcoming changes will enable a new direction to emerge. See the good that is already in your life and be thankful for it every day. There are blessings all around you. Put your strengths and constructive attributes into something positive. Be in the flow. Open your eyes and your heart and enjoy this process. There is an easy ease and beauty to how you handle this task. Coral is believed to have appeared on the planet over 542 million years ago. The coral reefs host over 4,000 species of fish and multitude of other sea life. Coral provides uh, a, a knowledge base. Blah, blah, blah. It's about timing and patience. It shows a universal trust in being where you are supposed to be. It asks you to plant the seeds in order to create your world with perfect timing. 
So it really is about enjoying every moment because that's the thing. And this is a conversation I had with my sources last week. It doesn't matter what we're doing, you know, even things like taking out the trash or shopping or brushing hair or brushing teeth or anything, you know, these things don't exist when you are a spirit. So this is why, you know, from spirit perspective, you know, like us from the hum uh, from the ego perspective, we have this plan, we have these things we want to achieve, these things we consider as perfect, this is where I want to get to, this is what I want to have, this is what I want it to look like, you know, but from the spirit perspective, you know, spirit has a very different plan, you know, from the higher self perspective, just us being here is a miracle, you know, the spirit being able to have a physical body to grow and evolve and experience reality, you know, it's like, it's a miracle, it literally is like an avatar, you know, like it, it is a miracle, so every Every, every single aspect of this life, every single aspect of this journey, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's like, you know, whether it's easy or difficult or challenging or painful or whatever it is, it is a miracle. It is a miracle. It's something that the spirit can only experience when we are incarnate, right? So everything is perfect at every moment, even though from human perspective it isn't, but from the spirit perspective it is, because every moment of us being here, taking in a breath and being alive, is a miracle. So that's why, you know, we, including myself, are invited to enjoy the journey, even if there is a noise, <laughs> You know, which is not my preference, but uh, yeah, you know, this is something that the spirit enjoys because it cannot experience that when, you know, when we are not incarnate. And then uh, the at the bottom, we have setting up para parameters, number 43, a lot of green, right? A lot of green, a lot of heart chakra. Access your relationships and determine how they are aligned with your goals. Setting boundaries requires an honest evaluation of your present relationships. So yeah, enjoy your journey, but it doesn't mean you have to suffer, you know, where you can set boundaries. No tie self, no tie self. So let's see, that's number 43, which is seven, like the seven of cups. A lot of things to choose from, right? <laughs> or seven of swords. What are the lies we tell ourselves? Or the seven of wands. Stand your ground. Yeah, which one which one did we not seven of pentacles? Yeah, it takes time. <laughs> Investment. Setting up parameters. Is a relationship taken away from other areas of your life? Are you getting off track because of demands that you are that are seeping into your personal space? If the par primary reason for your connection with another is no longer a benefit, or if the relationship seems to be in a never-ending loop, it is time to make the decision to set some new boundaries. If you are being challenged personally, you will need you, you will need to remain emotionally mature in dealing with the negative energy from others. You need to be clear in your own mind about what your boundaries are. You get to determine what is and is not acceptable on an emotional level. You are more than capable of being level-headed in, and in control of your emotions. Use your emotional intelligence to make smart decisions. Remember to not let circumstances or whims sway you from your core belief systems and morals. This is also a reminder to reinstate boundaries you already have in place. Yeah, and this is also part of the um, transition we're going through, you know, where uh, we are not here to live somebody else's life by somebody else's standards and expectations. And as I keep saying all the time, when you change, people around you have to change. And if they don't want to change, they will disappear from your life. They will no longer be in alignment. But we not supposed to play small just to accommodate other people or, you know, to suffer just so the other people don't feel they're suffering alone or something. That's what I mean, you know, like we're not going to uh, help people who are suffering by, 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 by suffering, you know, like uh, it's, it's the light, it's the happiness, it's the joy that uh, creates the opposite frequency so this energy can be neutralized. So it is, uh, boundaries play a very, very strong role in my personal life because of, you know, uh, also what I recently discovered through my Akashic Record reading because of how in my past lives that was al al always trespassed, always. And I have a huge sensitivity to that in this life as well. Uh, so yeah, you know, this is the opportunity for each and every single one of us to, yeah, we always can move the boundaries but to know where your limits are, right? Which is also something I covered previously. 
Okay, and we are running out of time. I have still three decks. Let me see. Okay, let's just let's just do this one first. Um, this is the Priestess of Light. Let's see if I can get just one quick message from it. And then I'm going to move to Beyond Lemuria because that's the deck I wanted to use yesterday, but I ran out of time. And Psychic Tarot, I'm just going to pull cards. So, okay. Okay, Priestess of the Light. Let's see. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> Priestess of the Light. One message, please. <laughs> one message from Priestess of the Light. So this is like our higher Priestess. Oh my god, all the cards are flying. High Priestess. Harvest. Gathering of Blessings, number 44. Number 8, Master Number Frequency. And at the bo uh, bottom is Circle of Eternal de Joy, Timelessness and Dance of Life. 41, the continuous change. And there is a bird on the top of her head, which I'm not quite sure which bird it is. But yeah, harvest. She has a sweet corn. And it's like a full moon. I think really this is a lot to do with the upcoming full moon in Pisces, the lunar eclipse. Because it is going to illuminate everything that needs healing and culminating and ending. Because it's Pisces. And to understand the deeper meaning of it all, so we can transcend it, the limitations of the past, which is this circle of uh, eternal joy, you know, we, we just come here to have an experience, nobody come here to fix the uh, world, or, you know, to, to heal everyone single-handedly, we all came here to have an experience. And just, you know, through our own life, our own presence, our own energy, our own soul signature, to impact the world right so yes yeah, so harvest the priestess of harvest gazes uh, gazes at an ear of corn with great reverence and appreciation for this sacred sustenance the cause the seed along with the effect the nourishing food coexist right in her hands a tribute to the bounty and blessings of mother earth there is again the reminder of mother earth the priestess knows that her own efforts and intentions are proud of the ongoing abundance uh, that nature provides. When you receive this card, you are being put on notice that your harvest is coming. There is a project or goal to which you have devoted much effort and attention and you are about to reap the rewards. You have planted your intentions with care and taken the action needed to tend the seeds and cause them to thrive. So if you haven't already seen the fruits of your labor growing in your life, be aware of the potential bountiful results are about to come your way and if there is some work yet to be done consider the best course of action and make that pri a priority remember too the sim simultaneity of cause and effect even as you as you are harvesting the blessings of the past you are planting the seeds of future outcomes so as you Ready yourself for the coming harvest. You know that your sacred appreciation for the gifts you are receiving will be seeding the energetic fields with even more joyous results. An affirmation is, I am working joyously on the goals and I'm planting now and I appreciate all the support and sustenance that the universe has to offer. This really speaks to me very strongly because it's literally about these endings and beginnings and there are no endings and there are no beginnings because literally like what we see now in the full manifestation is the harvest of that which happened before. You know, we can like it or not like it, but at the same time, how we're going to deal with this is seed in our future, which is why these things have to culminate. We are no longer allowed to make the same choices under the same circumstances to experience the same reality because this cycle is, is transforming into something completely different. So this is like metaphorically like, yeah, you reap what you sow, but uh, at, the, at the time of sowing, you already... Um, at the time of reaping, you already saw in the future. So this is why we we have to heal the past ways of doing things and start responding to situations differently because we have to heal the current harvest, the current energies by, uh, you know, cre creating uh, and through that, through healing the current harvest, the current manifestation is all, of the, all that is manifest is in the reality, we are creating the seeds for the future. But the future we are creating 
it's completely different from the future from the past we experienced therefore we cannot be seeding the same seeds because the harvest will not be the same so this is why we need to harvest in a different way so this is very interesting because even though it is uh, showing um it's just different energy but it's completely applicable to this situation and this again i feel is very strongly connected to this lunar eclipse in pisces that uh, will be coming will be coming soon okay and now this circle of it and it's interesting that so many cards are talking about joy and this is something that's been very prominent in the messages i was receiving and we have the moon moving into leo this entire weekend moon is in leo which is about joy about the childlike innocence and it's also what i've been talking about and other people been talking about that this um cycle of karma and reincarnation to come back to earth and experience life of suffering and pain and you know suppression and all the rest of it that is maxed out you know like now we are creating a reality of joy and happiness and childlike innocence and experience life very differently and for many people it sounds impossible and it sounds like utopia and they think i'm crazy but i wholeheartedly believe that because would that have not been the potential i would not be here that is 100 percent guarantee I would not come back to this planet if that was not the potential so circle of eternal joy because this is what we always wanted you know the sun your prana your unique expression is leo and leo is the child childlike happiness the thing we love doing for for you know because we enjoy them so this is why we come back to earth over and over and over again because we want to create reality that we will enjoy more even in the physical form right timelessness and dance of life so it's this lady and the circle of life we can see and that bird at the top you know looking at things from the higher perspective oh dove okay so it's dove that bird is a dove the dove of spirit brings a blissful feeling of anticipation to the priestess of the dance the pair, pair faces outward in front of a portal that leads to the energetic realm yeah that's the new earth over there this mystical vortex is a place of power where intentions and vibrations reach from the long distance past into the infinite future the dove is a symbol of eternal spirit a divine consciousness that moves freely through time and space your soul is of the same spiritual nature and your energy spirals through time engaged in the dance uh, of repetition of repetition and rebirth each turn of the dance each life and every day brings opportunities for joy and your present joy spins blissful intentions into the fabric of the future so rem remember that your soul has come to experience both happiness and self-mastery learn that there is learn what there is to learn but never forget to let your spirit soar this card brings profoundly encouraging guidance your life is eternal and you are always connected to the bliss of your spiritual perspective no matter what you may be going through know that you can still find happiness purpose and understanding in the dance that is your current that is your current life there may, may be a literal message as well, a suggestion to dance more, perhaps to take dance classes and to find joy in movement and music. There might also be a party coming up, maybe even a wedding. I'm going to wedding next week. <laughs> wedding for you or someone you know. Remember to find your bliss in a little moment. Let yourself dance, laugh, sing and enjoy. An affirmation is, I live in a vortex of joy, joyous energy. I listen to the beautiful music of my life and dance to my soul's sweet song. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yes, absolutely. We are saving a more joyous future by focusing more on the joyous moments of our current reality even though we har harvest in the past which is not always joyous but we need to focus on the joy to create a future of the joy because this is the world that we are manifesting okay we, we went a little bit over time but i really do want to pull a card from this lemuria because this is a deck that i had ready for yesterday and i didn't uh get a chance to pull from and yeah you know because everything you see that is nothing new under the sun even though expression of that is different but you know this lemuria and atlantis is coming around and this is where we're heading you know what we're experiencing now many people you know are remembering atlantis 
And then we're going beyond Atlantis, we're going to Lemuria, even though they coexisted at the same time, but it was of a very different frequency. But Lemuria was not very embodied <laughs> on the Earth. So we're going beyond Lemuria, you know? We're going beyond Lemuria. So let's see what the Lemuria wants to speak, because, yeah, because this is the future of this planet. We're going beyond Lemuria, beyond Atlantis, beyond Chem, beyond everything, you know? We have the potential to create a completely different experience that is here to last, that will not be destroyed by our ego, you know, the continuous, you know, we create something and the whole civilization gets wiped out. Why? Because of the ego. And this is why why we're going through this healing process right now this is why we harvesting what we sell in the past and we have the opportunity to create more joy to find more joy in our experience and you know it's all this through the connection with nature i mean it all speaks of the same thing you know and the cupio dissolved by letting go letting go and this self-nurture right the bear the self-nurture mother earth and yeah and this what was this the enjoy the journey, same thing, right? Enjoy the journey and putting up boundaries, you know? Don't leak your energy where your energy is not appreciated and which is no longer in alignment with who you are, right? Like, we don't have to. We have the choice. So let's go to be on Lemuria. Be on Lemuria. Message, please. Thank you. What is the message from Beyond Lemuria? Oh, okay, okay, a lot of cards, but there is one especially. Healing, yes, healing, exactly. This is what we're going through, we know that. Healing, why? And high heart chakra, our high chakra is opening, timus, and fire. We've been set on fire. <laughs> fire, the element of creation. And evolution, absolutely. Oh, wow. Journey to wholeness and violent flame, forgiveness. Throw chakra, learning to express ourselves, loving compassion. I mean, we can just hold, go from the whole deck. You know, throw chakra, uh, learning to express ourselves, loving compassion. And yeah, at the end of that is freedom. Freedom and sovereignty and alignment. Freedom and alignment. I mean, this whole deck is saying the story. Starseed, because this is what we are. And we're holding the hope for the different future. Oh my God, literally, this whole deck is just a story. We're going through a process of healing as a humanity. Opening our heart so we can connect with the reality in a different way. The fire of creation is already there, but Kundalini is being set on fire to create different reality. Remember, Mars was in a sign of Pisces during the solar eclipse in Aries, co-creation with the spirit. This is evolution. This is evolution. This is where we're going. Look at the DNA. Journey back to wholeness. Okay, let's let's hide the lady. So, you know, YouTube doesn't get upset. So, yeah, journey to wholeness, to call back the fragments of ourselves we lost throughout all these different incarnations our our ancestors lost you know this is all about this healing right the healing the violet flame forgiveness we need to forgive the past because otherwise it will keep recreating itself because the energy is stuck right? This energy, this is, we play these opposite roles all the time, but we need to neutralize the energy, forgive, you know, release it, let it go, so it doesn't have to be coming with us, it's all the same archetype, Neptune, forgiveness, healing, compassion, you know, uh, all this, it's all the same archetype, you know, meaning, and then this uh, uh, transcendence, loving compassion, exactly, violet flame and loving compassion, you know, and yeah, throw the uh, throat chakra, self-expression. It starts from, you know, from uh, it's that even in human design, this is where things come out of the body, how we create throat, self-expression. And you can see the Merkaba and the butterfly, the butterfly, the metamorphosis, the wings, right? To freedom, freedom, the ultimate freedom, because we are all starseed and alignment, right? And then starseed. Starseed Elemental, yeah, alignment, complete alignment, this is why we're here, this is why we're all here, all of us starseeds are here exactly for that, you know, this alignment, freedom, healing, calling back the aspects of ourselves, I'm not even going to read the booklet because I pulled half of the cards from the deck, but yeah, perhaps, perhaps I just read the last one, the freedom, the freedom with the 
with the dragonfly the dragonfly freedom it's a number 25 number 25 which is number seven we already had a 25 somewhere oh no it was 43 43 which was also seven Freedom, living the life you love, liberation, a shift in perspective, the many facets of freedom, inviting enjoyment and inspiration to your life, discovering what pr true freedom means to you, overcoming limitations, unbound creative expression, choice over obligation. Freedom means living as you choose, with your wings and heart open, able to direct your reality as you want. The quest for freedom is one uh, in one form or another seems innate. And in Western culture, the path to freedom is often <clears throat> equated with money. Ironically, chasing wealth can have the opposite effect due to length it takes for it to be acqu acquired. It is possible to live a life in thriving alignment with our soul's calling by financially supporting our reality. divinatory meaning bring a bring, bring a deeper sense of freedom to a situation a limitation might be a state of mind a shift of perspective can help bring a sense of lightness and choice also con consider what freedom looks like to you in the bigger picture of your life if you are feeling stifled in an environment it is up to you to make a change add pleasurable moments or practices that cultivate a sense of greater freedom in your day-to-day -day life if you are currently experiencing greater freedom, you might feel might be feeling unsettled. Consider whether it is the kind you were looking for. If you feel ungrounded and lost, perhaps you could add some structure to your world to optimize your freedom. Yeah. And then let's just read. Okay. Be anyway, we are too late. So um, alignment, because I feel because that's the number nine, which is the culmination with uh, and look the dolphins right with the lemuria the dolphins are present freedom and alignment because all these cards are so beautiful and they all like spot on but yeah i cannot read all of them alignment seed card Inner integrity, being a vibrational match to what you want to bring into your life, manifesting from a place of love, love over fear, energy flows where atten attention goes, subconscious sabotage seemingly uh, actualizing our dream. We all have the ability to manifest the life we wish to call in. However, we might find our desires are not actualizing as we hoped. Energy goes where attention flows. And if our thoughts and focuses fixate on something that opposes that what we want to bring into our lives, this will cause dissonance. Is there an internal sabotage? Are we without realizing undermining ourselves through our language, our worries and our broken records that plays in our mind? And then there is more, but divinatory meaning. Look at where your desires and manifestations are being seeded. Hmm? Seeded, again, seed. If, you pla if your plans and dreams aren't unfolding as you would like them to, it's time to take a deeper look at other areas of your life. Is something out of step with integrity? Are you making decisions through fear or love? If it is through fear or avoidance, your manifestations are seemingly backfire to encourage experiences that will bring you back to back into balance. It is time to become a vibrational match for what you are seeking. Instead of striving harder for something, cultivate the feeling of already having what you seek. You will be surprised at what this shift in perspective creates. And this is what we are learning. Yeah. To go beyond our limitations, our fears, our wounds, karma, all of it. To find the ultimate freedom. Okay, and let me just close with the psychic tarot because anyway this video is already too long. So one minute more doesn't make much difference. Okay, psychic tarot. Closing message. Please. Okay. Firm foundation. I think we had this before. I know I saw this card very recently. Firm foundation, creating new structure of our reality. Okay, suffering in silence. This was reverse. This is the nine of swords, you know, which is the nightmare card. And yeah, and under that was trapped in fear, psycho chakra, movement choices. Yeah. 
be creating new foundation by choosing not to allow the fear to overcome us. And uh, yeah, Eight of Swords, same thing. And then Two of Pentacles, making a new choice, creating balance, balance, sacred chakra, connecting with our joy. Again, joy, it goes back to the joy because it's the creation. The solar, uh, solar, solar plexus, sacred chakra is the creation. It's from where we create. So yeah, so this is what's happening. At least from my cards, this is what seems to be happening. So uh, I'm just going to close this session. Thank you to all my spirit guides, my higher self, ancestors, our starseed family, uh, Lemurian family, and uh, all the beings of light that were present for this reading. And thank you all the cards that share their messages with us. And thank you everyone for listening. If you're still here, uh, I hope that there was something of a value in this video. And I wish you all a wonderful rest of the weekend. And I'll be intending to record one more practical application of astrology in nature as a closing notes prior to me uh, leaving England next weekend. So I wish you all a wonderful week ahead until then and I'll speak to you soon. Much love everyone and bye for now.